Yo, yo, yo. What is going on, team? This is Art, and I'm going to be going over my trades that I had taken today. I made $15,000 today trading in the stock market using stock options, and I'm pretty much just going to go over how I did that, what I was looking at when it came to taking these plays, and how I went about doing this last night because I did post up a watch list. And with that, I had pointed out the majority of the plays that ended up coming out to uh, the results that I had today. So I did play QQQ, SPY, Tesla, Microsoft, I believe IWM, and overall it ended up coming out to about $15,000 worth of profit. And this is because of good timing and overall knowing when to take profit and not to be greedy. And also just a little bit of thoughts that I'm going to be having when it comes into trading to, or not tomorrow, <laughs> I always think of uh, every day being a trading day. Uh, going into Monday the 8th. So as of right now at least, I'm currently completely liquid. I do not want to be swinging anything because I do not know if we'll gap back down. That in mind though, I do see an inverse head and shoulders happening with the majority of these ETFs. So when you look at uh, SPY and QQQ, notice we have a shoulder, a head, and we're starting to form our other shoulder. So I wouldn't be surprised if we either slightly dipped on Monday or if we stayed relatively flat and then we saw a rip back up to maybe this 315, 200 SMA area. That in mind though, let me get over my trades and kind of give you guys an idea of what was up. So that in mind, here are my trades that I took. Uh, here's Facebook, March 21st, 575C. I had called this out as a play on the break of, on the 258 break. Sheesh, that was hard to say for some reason. And this was basically playing on the recovery of Facebook going from red to green. And I made $1,700 on this play. It was around 10%. I'm playing with anywhere from $3,500 to about $20,000 when it comes to my position sizes. That's just a heads up. And I like to play in the money with multiple weeks of expiry time. That way I do have room in case it does not immediately go in my favor. And so pretty much what I had seen right here on Facebook was on this hourly chart, Facebook was trying to get above this 50 SMA for quite a while. And so once it was able to break above here, I know it's a little messy, but once we were able to break above 50 SMA, I was very comfortable taking a call position knowing that this would act as our support going into the future. And so my profit target initially was 260 because that was also acting as a resistance in the past. So I just wanted to get that really quick scalp trade out and I ended up landing about $1,700 on that. Next, I took a Tesla call play. This was $3,000. Uh, this was towards the end of the day for Tesla. And what I wanted to kind of note here was on a five minute chart. Typically, I'm not using these long term charts, but when it comes to a scalp play, it is very useful to use. So basically, Tesla was sliding all morning long and we did not really do too well. Seeing that Tesla was super weak, I didn't want to take any call positions too early. But once I saw the reversal ping right here with my custom indicator, I also saw the MACD and RSI start to reset. So MACD had crossed over to the upside and we saw RSI come out of the oversold area. That in mind though, I waited for this thing to get back above 580, although I could have caught this $30 bump. I was still a little uneasy taking a position long when everything else was pretty much red the entire day. And so pretty much I had taken this based off of the 580 break. And I was looking to take profit around $5.95. I took something out of the money. Again, this is an extremely risky play. I don't really do these kinds of plays too often. But it was a $600 strike. And I ended up taking profit around $5.90 to like $5.92. And so overall, the play came out fairly nice. And then I sold, and then it kind of dipped back down. That said, though, it came out pretty all right from there. On, t uh, on top of that, we also had a one hour kind of RSI and MACD reset as well. So notice it was a little later and we did see it kind of land around 590. We had RSI reset from oversold and that again is additional confirmation. Uh, next, we had a Tesla call for 580. This was also like a small scalp during the actual day trade uh, itself. So I took multiple strikes, the 580 being something a little more like uh, risk safe and what I did was again same kind of setup I had this crossover event and I had RSI reset and I basically played that exact same thing but I played from 580 support now that I knew that we were able to hold that spot 
And again, notice that we kind of acted as a bear flag right here in the past on the five minute chart. Now this is our bottom or our floor. So I took it and I bounced it back to 590 and that's where I made that small little profit. It was only a couple of contracts, which is why the PL is much different. That in mind, uh, I also took another trade in Tesla. This is 570 calls. This was just one position. And I just wanted to kind of get a little bit of scalp money coming into the same type of play. I wanted to do something in the money to kind of hold my uh, position a little more safe. But I did want to have some sort of exposure into Tesla because I noticed that we continued to bounce this 580 area. And so again, we bounced 580 and I made about 200 bucks per contract, but it was only one contract. Next, oh, I apologize for the background noise as well. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah. Uh, on top of that, this is a 580 put. That was $1,500 that we made on that play. And that was off of the uh, off of our due diligence that we had done the night before. We had that H pattern going onto the hourly chart. And so off of that was what had led me to believe that we would drop today. So here's our H. I know it's kind of abstract. You can even consider this to just be a bear flag. But H, here's our leg, and then here's our little rounding out part, and then we head lower. I had entered on the 600 break, and I sold around 590. Uh, again, out of the money, I would not recommend doing this personally. Also, I'm not a financial advisor, just a small heads up, but I wouldn't consider taking a out of the money position because the theta can eat you like very quickly, and you can lose very fast. I like to do in the money so I'll take two or three strikes in the money and I'll take about three weeks worth of expiry time. That way I can cover my downside while also still having a relatively liquid position without having to spend too much out of pocket. On top of that, I did also take Microsoft to the upside. This is an open position as of right now. So these are the 235 calls with an April 1st expiry. And I mainly liked Microsoft out of all the rest of tech because it is kind of forming this little W, but on top of that, it is way stronger than the rest of tech in comparison to, say, Amazon or Apple or Google, where they've been sliding very heavily with the market, while Microsoft is a little more defensive when it comes to having exposure into tech. And so when I saw that Microsoft was holding relatively green for the day, I decided to enter right in the morning. I did mention this play to a lot of people. And I wanted to take something out of the money on this one because I did believe that we would touch the 200-day moving average. And at the time, it was around 235. And with that in mind, I also took an April 1st expiry because I do plan on swinging this for quite a while. So that does go over this trade right here. Uh, next, we have IWM. This play, I think it's currently up a lot more. I think around $2,000, but... Again, this is, these are open swings, so technically it's not locked in yet. I only locked in about 13000 but, well, you know, we can take that with a, with a little bit of a grain of salt here. And the main reason why I took IWM, uh, I saw an inverse head and shoulders, and so off of that, that's why I took calls. The market slid, and then I entered around maybe like 210 area. It did go down to 207, and at my lowest point, I think I was down around $4,000. Uh, I was bleeding like crazy and this is why again you don't take out of the money contracts because they can be a lot more risky But it does pay off sometimes that in mind though We did have a crossover in pre-market and we had a reversal to the upside at 211 and on top of that we had a relatively Neutral to bullish RSI so it was only a matter of time before we could get above and actually break to the upside This as of right now has an open win of about two thousand dollars uh, on top of that, we have a bunch of Facebook trades. I ended up closing this Facebook trade. I have that right there, but Facebook, $1,700 and $550. Uh, Facebook was extremely strong today and overall was trading extremely well in comparison to the rest of tech, especially in the morning, because even though it opened at 262, it only had dipped down to 255, which even then was not red. It was only about a dollar and a half red in comparison to the multiple percentage points that other stocks were down. And so with that said, we did hold on to 20 and nine SMA on hourly. On top of that, we have a crossover that never fully crossed back down, meaning that we were still on the same precedent of an upside trend. That in mind, I took a position at this two, uh, 257 level based off of the 50 uh, SMA break. 
and from 258 I wrote it up to 260 I sold it did kind of dip a little bit and then it went back up and that's when I re-entered and I took a smaller profit that was about yeah five hundred fifty dollars and from there uh, well this position is now closed I did re-enter at the 262 break for a fifteen seventy two dollar profit and that was right here when we broke above the 200 day moving average and I rode that tool about 263 and a half and that's where I took profit that was about a 15 or so percent profit and overall came out very nicely which is what led me to have about a $15,000 PL day. That in mind though, uh, I mainly want to harp on how important it is to have a set of rules that you go by and not to get greedy. I was only taking trades that I knew were high probability and with that in mind, that's why I decided to take these trades that I took. I know exactly where I'm going to enter and I know where I'm going to exit. Otherwise, I will not take the position because I could be putting myself at risk and putting my money at risk and my goal is to ultimately turn a profit and that is all in the rule set you do not want to be taking unnecessary risk when you don't need to I believe that what I did was calculated and what I did was the correct move at the time and so that said I do want to say that take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because I am a little more uh, risk um, I'm more so ready to take risk in comparison to some people who may be more risk averse. So that in mind, do as you want, but keep in mind you need to have a set of rules to go by when it comes to trading. Otherwise, you can get caught up and take losses that you don't need to take overall. It's just a trading style thing. I trade for scalps. I don't usually take very long swing trades, but when I do, I do like to make sure that I am covered in most directions possible. And then lastly, I just wanted to go over how I feel for the market going into the future. Again, we have this massive head and shoulders pattern forming even on four hour charts. So you can kind of see it right here, shoulder, head, and we're starting to form this other inverse uh, shoulder right here. We also have a crossover on four hour charts for the majority of stocks that we're seeing here. So with that in mind, I wouldn't mind taking a position to the upside going into Monday. I am currently liquid. I do not want to be taking anything over the weekend in case we do open red. But that in mind, I think we'll, we'll see some sort of slight red to flat day tomorrow to have this inverse head and shoulders kind of come to uh, fruition. And that's how I'm going to be basing my plays again. I'll be live on Sunday for a Sunday stock talk. I have the link in the description if you want to join and be a part of it. I will be taking tickers from uh, viewers and we'll be able to go over overall mo uh, market sentiment and how we feel going into the week starting in March of or March 8th, 2021. Uh, I appreciate you for watching and I hope that you got some value out of this and how I went into a trade, what my thoughts were exactly, and what I wanted to do with each position. I appreciate you for watching. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to join the room, and I will catch you guys later. Overall, great trades, and I'm very proud of everyone who took the positions today because we all followed our rules.